All right. So without further ado, let's get started with our next hour presentation on life in San Luis Obispo. We are super excited to present our second webinar for the fall uh, to prospective students. So a little bit about myself. My name is Aaron Borgeson. I'm an admissions officer at Cal Poly. Uh, I have two degrees from Cal Poly and I originally came uh, to the San Luis Obispo area to pursue my undergraduate in political science. And then you know what, I just stuck around. I've earned a second degree and I love to work with prospective students like you all here today. And uh, my virtual background is actually the surrounding hills of Cal Poly and San Luis Obispo and our, our, and our greater community. So uh, we have a team of poly reps as well as ASI programming staff here, but we want to know where you're coming from here today. So we're launching a poll. We wanna know who's in the audience here today. Um, and we would love for you to uh, just share um, who you are. So uh, let's launch that poll team um, and let's really hear from you all here today um, more about who you are. So without further ado, let us know where you are coming from here today. That first question is if you're coming from maybe a uh, state of California, you might be an international student, uh, you might also be coming from one of our time zones uh, in the greater United States. We also want to know um, maybe are you a high school student thinking of applying as a first year, or maybe you're a transfer student thinking of applying as a community college or a four year student. You might even be a parent supporter, even a school counselor. So, and then we do have six colleges at Cal Poly. So we always like to know what maybe majors you might be interested in uh, as well. So like I said, I'm an admissions uh, officer. Uh, for those that might have joined late, my name is Aaron Borgeson. I use the pronouns he, his, and him. And I am super excited for us to get started. So without further ado, a um, couple of housekeeping items you're going to see down below uh, during your time here today. There are two different things. Chat, that's going to be a way for us to send out really core information to you all here today. So that chat functionality, we're going to send out some quick links to you all. If you have any questions from our team here today, use that Q&A function down below. That Q&A button is going to be a great opportunity to ask our staff any questions that you might have. But without further ado, let's introduce our panelists. Let's start it off with our poly reps who serve as university ambassadors, and they'll be able to, um, they'll be able to introduce themselves here. Sweet, I can kick it off. Hi y'all, my name is Grace Lauer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a current fourth year at Cal Poly studying architecture with a minor in sustainable environments. Um, I'm a current poly rep, so we give tours all around Cal Poly and now virtually, so that's been a blast. So we're so stoked to be able to come to you wherever you are. Um, I'm originally from Edina, Minnesota. So any of you out of staters, I see we have a couple. Um, if you have any questions about being an out of state student coming to SLO, um, feel free to put those in the chat. How about you, Lindsay? Who are you? What's up, everyone? My name is Lindsay Katzer, and I am a current fourth year business administration major with a concentration in human resources and management and a minor in psychology. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am from Agora Hills, California. So if you are from Southern California, you are automatically my favorite. And I see a lot of y'all are. Um, Minnesota's great too, Grace, you know, love it. <laughs> and, um, and I should be graduating with the class of 2021. Off to you, Catherine. All right, hello everyone. My name is Catherine, pronouns she, her, hers. I am also in the College of Business, but my concentration is information systems. And I'm also pursuing a minor in ethnic studies. I'm from Pleasanton um, in the Bay Area. And just like Grace and Lindsay, I am a tour guide on campus. So we wish we could be with you in person, but super excited that you've logged on today, you know, to hear more about the Compal experience. And without further ado, oh, sorry about that. No, you're good. Let's introduce our ASI programming staff that is here to uh, speak more about that Cal Poly experience. Hey guys, I'm Madison Shepard, pronouns she, her, hers, and I am a second year business administration major concentrating in marketing, and I am the ASI recreational sports marketing student assistant here. Hey everyone, um, I'm Nick Price. I'm a fourth year experience industry management major. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, I'm the student manager of ASI events, which you'll hear about later on. Um, I'm currently back home in Piedmont, California, which is in the East Bay. Sweet. So, I mean, timing's great. Um, two days ago was um, a really important holiday. We wanted to make sure that Indigenous peoples um, are not only thought of as 
honorary on our campus as the land that Cal Poly's on is not originally ours. Um, but every single day is Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, and so we have a great land acknowledgement specifically for the, the tribes and the peoples from San Luis Obispo. So Cal Poly is located in Tahini, which is the place of the full moon. And we gratefully acknowledge, respect, and thank Yaki Tutu, Yak Tahini, the Northern Chumash tribe of San Luis Obispo County and region in which whose homelands we are guests. Sweet. So we are just going to have a little bit of an agenda for this. This is specifically for life in San Luis Obispo. Um, I do want to plug a little bit the virtual tours that we have going on on exploring Cal Poly. Um, so if you want to learn more about what it's like to be a current student and like life on and off campus, this is going to be more like once you get here and less about academics. Um, but we'll do an overview of San Luis Obispo. Downtown Life, which is, we have the cutest little downtown in all of America. Um, we do have ASI, Associated Students Incorporated. They're kind of like our student body government, but they do so much more. So they'll go in, more into that. And then we'll go into outdoor activities and then students in the SOAR community and how we interact as community members. And then we'll do a little like live Q&A and ask the panelists questions. Sweet. So this is a little bit of an overview of San Luis Obispo. We do call it slow here, slow me's, slow, slow town, all of the above, like just little acronyms, makes it less of a mouthful, if you know what I mean. Um, so slow is a central coast town, central coast California. We're like directly in between the Bay and LA, which is super helpful. So you kind of have those close connections to bigger, communities if you want to. Also for our in-state students, it's really easy to get to slow, but it has that, uh, that like small town feel, but still kind of a hidden gem within California. Um, we have a great community within San Luis Obispo, the city, but we are a part of the, the county as well. And so when we talk about a lot of the events that we have going on, those aren't necessarily in San Luis Obispo. Like they, they can be in Moro or in Avila in all different regions in the county as well. So we're definitely tied to both when you come here as a student. We are half the population of San Luis Obispo. We're about 40,000 um, within the city and then Cal Poly is like 22,000. So we're definitely a typical college town, but we are really ingrained within being community members in SLO, not just college students. And I think that that makes our college town a little bit different than a lot of other college towns. Like we're, we're so much more than just students here. We're active in the community and we'll definitely go more into that. Um, but we have a great downtown that's a, dry, a three minute drive from campus and um, our weather is absolutely gorgeous. I wish I was there right now because it's boiling hot. It's like 90 degrees and everyone's sweating over there. Haha. <laughs> it's only like 60 degrees where I am so I'm a little cold. Um, but it's 75 and sunny pretty much year round and I mean it makes it great for hiking, for going to the beach, or just being outside in general. All right. Yeah, it is hot here, Grace. You're right. Also, I do just want to say, if you see me snapping, that might be, that's like, I agree with something that's like, oh, yes, downtown is the best. Um, Firestone sandwiches are incredible, stuff like that. Um, so talking a little bit about slow, Grace did mention how we really are, I would say like the definition of a college town um, and what that kind of looks like for whenever you get to visit. Um, we have the campus and then just about a mile and a half out is our downtown. And for a lack of a better word, I would say it's popping. Like it is just, there is so much to do. There is like, you go downtown and you're with your friends and you see your other friends and everyone just kind of meets up. There is so much to do. There's plenty of food, really, really great food. At the end of every one of my tours I give on campus, I give recommendations for all the best places to eat, to get dessert. Actually, there was like a viral Facebook video about um, a donut place that we have in Slow that is 24 hours. It is the study shop, let me tell you. Um, but what's really great about Slow is it gives you kind of that small town vibe. Um, Grace is not wrong. Downtown does have the best um, ice cream place in the world. They make it in a real waffle cone. Like it's like a real waffle where they make like the ice cream out of nitrogen. This is not a plug for them, but also it is. They should pay me for advertising. But um, there really is just like so much to do. There's little shops. It's really, there are a ton of like family owned shops and it's very local and everyone's a part of the community. And so when you go out and about, it's, you're not just like, 
going to the nearest Starbucks, we have, Grace and I spend hours upon hours at coffee shops all around Slow, and we go to different ones every week, um, and it really is just like, it's such a fun community experience. And here's the thing is when you go to study, you guys know that how that environment is when you're like, I'm going to go to a coffee shop and I'm going to study. Well, when you run into all your friends at a coffee shop, because that's also where they go, you don't get a whole lot of studying done, but you get enough and it's great. Um, but honestly, just like being involved in, um, in the city, just it's a part of the Cal Poly experience. So when we say slow, we really mean Cal Poly. When we say Cal Poly, we mean slow. Um, so it's a really, really just like great environment to be in. Uh, we have a farmer's market. Um, I believe that might be on the next slide, but we have a farmer's market every first Thursday of the month uh, or every Thursday of the month. And um, that's where you have like vendors from these little shops and they, you know, bring like their grills and things out onto the street and they're cooking food and everyone's dancing. There's music, all that stuff. There is just like, it's really just the cutest small town vibe. Um, also every first Thursday of the month, we have something called bike night. I don't know how to ride a bike, but from what I hear from other people that do, um, you have like the streets are shut down and people are riding their bikes around and everyone's just screaming like bike night. That's how I contribute. Um, but it really is just a, such, like such a fun experience. And there's also like all these booths and I, um, you can like win prizes at some of these booths. I don't know. It's kind of like a carnival every Thursday. Um, and Cal Poly also takes part in it. So um, they're really just, I don't know. I think that out of the things that people highlight about Cal Poly, um, slow downtown and the farmer's market, things like that, they really are all all like an integral part of our experience. Um, we have like a sunset movie drive-in, we have the beaches, 10 beaches within 10 miles, 156 hikes. Um, really there is not a whole lot of downtime um, because we're always out and about. So um, that's a little bit on that, but I am going to pass it on to our ASI. So hey guys, Nick and I are here to show you future students of Cal Poly how you guys can have the ultimate college experience through taking advantage of ASI offerings and to also give examples of different ways incoming students can start your ASI adventure by getting involved. So what is ASI? ASI is a student-run um, nonprofit organization that provides opportunities for students to experience life outside of the classroom. Uh, things like leadership, employment, recreation, shared governance, and social and cultural experiences are all things that ASI provides to students. Um, all of students all of ASI's offerings are free or low cost to students and are funded through student fees. All the things we offer our way are uh, giving back to students. And here you'll see a web diagram to give you a little bit better um, an idea of what ASI is. We'll now start um, to break down what all these green bubbles do. Um, and the first one that Madison will talk about is student government. So student government on our campus has a large range of influence in addressing different campus issues. We are broken up into three different branches. First, we have the executive cabinet. The branch is led by the ASI president and their chief of staff. Next, we have the ASI board of directors. This is a group of 25 elected individuals from each of the six academic colleges. Lastly, we have the university union advisory board. This is a group of appointed students, one from each academic college that help advise the use of our ASI managed facilities. Switching gears a little bit, I'll go more into on-campus um, ASI programming. Um, and we'll start off by showing you the five facilities that ASI manages. The first is the Julian A. McPhee University Union, Cal Poly Recreation Center, Door Family Field, Cal Poly Sports Complex, and Orfield Family and ASI Children's Center. Um, and inside of all these facilities are all of our ASI programs. And so moving on to our program areas, ASI has a lot of different program areas for all our students to get involved in. Uh, we're going to go through all of them and briefly explain the activities and experiences that you um, all could get involved with. So within the Recreation Center, there are many popular programs for students to take part in every day. First, we have ASI Intramural Sports. There are over 150 leagues and tournaments offered, including basketball, flag football, soccer, volleyball, tennis, and more. There are also many one-day tournaments that are less of a time commitment, such as aqua basketball, spike ball, table tennis, dodgeball, capture the flag, and more. Currently, ASI Intramural Sports is offering virtual programming, including esports tournaments and weekly trivia. Next, we have fitness and personal training. 
There are over 300 classes offered in various discipline areas of mind and body, such as yoga, spin, body pump, bar connect, and more. Most classes are offered at no cost, but there are some fee-based classes such as Krav Maga and TRX. At the moment, we are offering virtual fitness classes via Instagram Live and Zoom. The recreation is also open at partial outdoor capacity by reservation only. Next, we have aquatics. At the recreation center, there are two pools, the leisure pool and the Olympic size lap pool. Besides just offering a place to swim and lounge, ASI Aquatics also offers swim lessons, group fitness classes, and even scuba certification courses. And lastly, we have the pro shop. The pro shop is located inside the recreation center and is a place to go if you need equipment for any type of pickup game like spike ball or ladder golf for your next beach day or backyard hangout. Within Poly Escapes, there are three main entities. We have trips, the climbing park, and the rental center. Poly Escapes offers many different types of trips, including hiking, backpacking, kayaking, surfing, or rock climbing for all experience levels. Trips are led by student leaders that are trained through the Polyscapes program. And the rental center is a great place to go if you want to experience outdoors, but want to do it on your own time. Here you can rent equipment at low cost. At the climbing park, students can reserve a time to go rock climbing if you already know how or want to learn how to rock climb. There are also a lot of fun events and classes hosted there throughout the year, like the annual crate stacking and bouldering competitions. Currently, Polyscapes is open at the climbing park and the rental center. They're also keeping busy on social media with a variety of virtual programs. It's like Craft Center is a great place to get crafty and create something of your own. Like Poly Escapes, the Craft Center welcomes students of all experience levels and offers classes with specialized instructors. Classes are hosted every quarter for unique activities such as surfboard shaping, ceramics, flame working, jewelry making, and much more. The Craft Center also has a ton of video tutorials on YouTube and social media so you can get crafty at home. Follow the Craft Center on social media or check out our website for more info. The last uh, program area we'll talk about is ASI Events, which is um, the program area that I oversee. I'm the student manager. ASI Events offers free or low cost events and activities created and ex executed by student employees. Um, you can see here a list of some events that, from the last school year, just so you can see a variety of the events that we offer. My first big event was Napoleon Dynamite movie screening and Q&A, as you can see in the picture. Um, this was with the three main actors. The event was a tribute to the 15 year anniversary of the classic movie and it was a huge success. Um, ASI Events also recently offered some virtual events, including a Q&A with David Dobrik and a virtual DJ set with Shaquille O'Neal, um, AKA DJ Diesel. Uh, virtual events have created a new challenge for our team, but they can definitely be done uh, effectively and efficiently. Uh, ASI Events is excited to bring educational, unique, and exciting events to our students this year. All right, I get the pleasure of talking about the beaches, which is probably one of my one of my favorite parts about being at school here. Really amazing. We always have the clout that we uh, live within 10 miles of 10 beaches. Pretty sweet. Um, some really common ones that Cal Poly students visit are Avila Beach, Pismo Beach. You might have heard of Pismo. It's pretty popular. We also have Shell Beach, Montaño de Oro State Park, which has an amazing view of the coast. We have Morro Bay, Cayucas, and then some strands between the two. There's like Dog Beach and Studio Drive. Um, all of these are places students go all the time. This definitely, having the beach nearby was a make or breaker. Um, it really made my first year amazing and has continued to. I'm a third year now. Um, and I would say I get out to the beach five times a week. Um, I do love to surf, and so that's a big part of it. I go almost every day. but even when I wasn't surfing, I'd get out three times a week maybe, and if I had two hours between classes, I could run out there because it's 10 minutes, uh, 10 to 12 minutes to Avila, and super close, and it's fun to study there or do whatever because it's just um, so accessible. The beach is definitely considered like a sort of classroom for Cal Poly students. Um, if you're in the College of Science and Math, Cal Poly actually owns a pier at Avila, and what that means is the pier is closed to Cal Poly students year round. Um, it's entirely there for student research. We have classes go out all the time. They're testing water salinity or they're trying to figure out, um, you know, the activity of wildlife in the area, in the ocean. So that's a really regular thing for students who have like lab based classes. They'll go out to the beach and study. Um, similarly, 
studying happens in Montago de Oro, you'll see my background actually right now. Uh, we have students looking at tide pools, um, but a variety of things go down for academic purposes on the coastline, which is pretty sweet. Um, something that's a really important thing to talk about when we're evaluating just how poly and everything it has to offer is the fact that it is so strategically located where it is. So it's no accident that Cal Poly ended up um, you know, this string of beaches right on the coast. Um, there was a lot of purpose in our location. And a huge reason for that is it just enhances the quality of education that students get because we get to be on site conducting research, studying there. Um, and that's not even talking about the benefits outside of the academics, but at least for inside academics, our curriculum is based around utilizing um, the nature we have nearby. So that's something I love about having the ocean near. Um, as I said earlier, students love to spend time at all of these beaches. You have a nice variety. Um, Avila has an amazing kind of beachfront restaurant vibe. There's no um, cars for a certain portion of the beachfront. And so it's kind of this huge plaza. Um, it gives a little bit of a European vibe. It's really lovely, nice like family place. You'll see a lot of kids there. Um, every Friday they do a farmer's market and they have live music. And you kind of look over at sunset while you're eating your mango flower that they made for you. That's just a really fond memory I have, but you can have it too if you come to Cal Poly. Um, then we have Morro Bay, and that's an amazing place. You can actually kayak on the bay. So it kind of offers some things that maybe you wouldn't do in the ocean. You might surf in the ocean or just swim, but when you go into the bay, you can more easily paddleboard and kayak. There's some nice walking trails that go around the bay. Um, and on one side of the land, the bay and on the other side it's the coastline and ocean that then leads towards Cayuca. so there's a huge variety there within 200 feet you know you could be looking at waves crashing into shore or you could go on the other side and see the still bay um, with kayakers kind of going across i would say each one of them has a each beach town has a little something special that makes it um important that you visit all of them if you get the pleasure of visiting slow sometime or if you come to school here it'll be a regular um thing for you as was mentioned in the chat our asi craft center actually has a surfboard shaping class so two of past poly reps um, some of our good friends jacob and brandon they taught this class um, for a few quarters and you basically anyone can do it you don't have to know anything about surfboard shaping you don't have to be a surfer and you come in with a small fee and they walk you through the process of shaping the fiberglass and covering it and I don't really know all the details that go into it, but it's pretty sweet. By the end of the quarter, you get to walk out with a full functioning surfboard um, to bring out into the water. Oh, more than 80 miles of coastline in slow. So, you know, I mentioned that you're going from Avila to Pismo to Shell, then you're at Montaño de Oro, then Los Osos Baywood, Morro Bay, Cayucas. That's a lot. 80 full miles of variety there. So you'll never really get bored going to the beach um, in slow. Finally, I just want to say when you're in your wow week, that's going to be an amazing experience throughout your entire college experience. You will get out into nature, um, but something that you can look forward to if you're planning to come to Cal Poly is wow week, which is um, a renowned intro to new students that Cal Poly puts on. And throughout that week, you will have mentors who are older students on campus and they will take you to the beaches. They may take you kayaking, um, but in that week, that's a really fun time you can be introduced to all the coastline here in slow all right i'm going to pass this on to lindsay to tell us a bit about hiking and the outdoors in slow i'd love to so um going off of that not only do we have like endless beaches um we also have just a great outdoor experience and like i mentioned like a threw a fact out there a while ago that we have over 156 hikes um, there are places I don't even know exist in Slow. You learn something new literally every day. You find out that Slow has like a secret little new pocket to explore. And like we're, Grace, and Carly and I are fourth years and I, Grace and I had a bucket list of things to do this past summer and we got through half of it. So if that gives you any idea of how much there is to do. Um, but in terms of hiking, there really is so much to do on campus and off campus. Um, 
on campus we have something called architecture graveyard which actually grace got really excited it's like she's an architecture major or something um but uh there is actually where they have their project called design village where they make these little dwellings grace if i say anything wrong correct me um but they make these little dwellings and they're so cool and they're these structures um and some of the really really cool massive projects are still there um and it's, so it's this really really cool hike that you can it's literally on campus and you can go my friend runs on it all the time which is cool he runs um really fun for him and uh so on this it's just you get to see like all the different projects that students do while also being on a really really beautiful hike um we have something called the tri-tip challenge we have nine sister peaks in the city of slow um and something called the tri-tip challenge is where you hike three of them you hike um madonna you hike bishops and well this is uh, serenity swing what mountain is this on if anyone knows off the top of their head you hike the p too that's the third one well that's the high, but what is serenity swing on i think it's just called serenity swing you just hike to oh. i think it's like an extension of the p yeah great all right so you um the the, ocean, you can see the ocean from the swing that's really cool to me <laughs> So on the um, for the tri-tip challenge, you hike the P, you hike, which is also on campus. You hike Madonna and you hike Bishops. And then after you've done all three in one day, you go to Firestone, which I am convinced is the best barbecue in Slow, and you get a tri-tip sandwich. Um, I usually just like pass on the hiking and I'm more for the sandwich aspect, but like, you know, to eat your own, it's kind of whatever you want, um, but there really is so much to do. We also have a... Um, an entire trail. It's called Bob Jones and it is a um, five mile there and back from like inland of, it's called Avila. It's a little city just about 15 minutes north of us or south I guess um, and you can just walk the entire thing and you get to the beach. You start in the mountains and you end up at the beach. How cool. It's honestly incredible and so it's five miles round trip. It's absolutely beautiful. You get to walk through nature reserves, see all these different animals. It is honestly just like such a fun thing. My friends and I wake up really early and do it. Um, it's a just incredible um, opportunity. And speaking of that, we also have something called Polyscapes, which I know, um, Madison, you did touch on. Uh, and that is honestly just such a great way to explore California. And so whether you're from California like me or you're from Minnesota like Grace, um, but you want to see more, <laughs> had to plug it, uh, you want to see more than just what is like 20, 30 minutes away. Um, we have uh, like break um, trips that you can go on like during spring break. If you want to go like hike Half Dome and see Yosemite, or if you just want to go paddle with the otters and in Morro Bay, which is 20 minutes away. So we really do want our students to get involved and learn by learn by doing for a lack of a better lack of a better term um there's like i said just so much around us we also have a ton of like things to see and we have something called hearst castle which is this beautiful um it's like you a little day trip up from slow um we grace and i actually for grace's birthday i don't know if you guys can tell grace and i are friends well we're all friends but um <laughs> for grace's birthday we took an hour and a half drive up to big sur which is i think one of the most beautiful places i have ever seen um and we went and hiked to a waterfall for her birthday um there's the madonna inn which has the best cake the best cake um and um it's just a really really cute like hotel that a lot of people stay in and we have um the avalo valley barn where they have like a petting suit in the fall and like little pumpkins so you see all the sorority girls going to take their pictures with like little pumpkins um i was said sorority girl so i can say that um but there really is so much to do for whatever your interests are um and now i'm going to throw it back to grace for um the slow community Sweet, thank you. I'm just answering a question in the Q&A right now. One, one second. Okay, so. awesome. So I kind of touched on this earlier about we're not just Mustangs, we are members of the slow community. And this means so many different things. Um, I mean, prime example, Catherine kind of touched on week of welcome and orientation in that realm. Um, so both times that I've been involved in orientation, both as a freshman and then also as a leader, um, we participated in something called the Center for Service in Action, which they have events year round, but especially during week of welcome, they have something called Slow Day of Service. And you're able to like sign up for different um, events that they have. And I mean, I installed, so our construction management um, department, they actually build tiny homes for for a class that they take and you just like learn 
everything about building a house essentially and they have this tiny house after and they're like what in the world do we do with this and so i actually had the opportunity to install this into uh an elementary school in atascadero for like a little garden shed for them so i was able to like see the fruits of some of my friends labors in this class and install it for them which was super great um, i've also done like painting houses in residential areas and just like doing yard work so i mean it's literally everything in regards to service um, and those events happen year round um, but a great way to get volunteering in we even have an entire um sorority and fraternity around um, community service in SLO. So if that's something that you're really interested in, feel free to learn more about that. Um, but I love living in residential areas, like being a freshman on campus, living in the residential learning communities is awesome. But then like living in your own house with a ton of people, not only means you just like feel like more like an adult, but you also get to live next to residents of SLO. Like I, my favorite um, events have been <laughs> over Thanksgiving last year, one of our neighbors baked us a pie, which I thought was so sweet. And she brought us brought it over to us after we'd all come back from break. Um, and then one of my other's neighbors has chickens. And so they would bring us eggs every single day. And two of my roommates were vegan. So they're like, we don't eat eggs. So two of us would just end up eating all of the eggs together, which was super funny. Um, but they really enjoy having us around because we're, we're members of the community. We like helping others and uh, we like being residents. Um, but we have so many different things downtown too that have like correspond with students. So we have the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. We have one of the top entrepreneurship programs, if not the top in the entire nation and within our college of business, shout out to Lindsay and Catherine. So this is actually a concentration that you can have. It's also a minor. So say you are an engineer and you have this great project that you want to like put into fruition, you can minor in entrepreneurship and kind of like kickstart that startup, whatever it is. Um, but that's where you'll do it at the Center for Innovation and entrepreneurship. This is also where the hatchery is. It's kind of like Shark Tank where different investors can come in and um, invest within our students, which is pretty cool. You can live at the Cal Poly Lofts downtown. So you can live off campus in housing that's not tied to Cal Poly, but also if you wanna be downtown and have that really specific tie with the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and small town businesses, definitely live in the Cal Poly Lofts. Participating in internships and part-time jobs doesn't just mean you're involved in San Luis Obispo. You, you can be anywhere in the world, in the nation. I mean, I've gotten internships in Scottsdale, Arizona from Cal Poly. So that's a really weird place to be, but really great. And that's all because of alumni and our lovely career fairs. Um, so check those out to get more involved. Student activism also plays a very large role on our campus, especially with the current climate. Um, being a student means educating yourself on topics that you're passionate about, and that can be anything from environmental activism um, or racial injustice, whatever you are passionate about, you can get a group together and go downtown. Just seeing the different protests um, within this past like summer and spring quarter have been so inspiring, um, and I definitely miss that sense of community when it comes to activism. But I love San Luis Obispo. I love being a community member there. I love being able to walk downtown and see my professors and see my neighbors and also see my fellow students. So yeah, that's, that's pretty great. All right. What's next? Okay, so we have, our, we're kind of transitioning into the, the back end of our little presentation. So we have some different questions to ask all of the panelists. Um, including you, Nick and Ramison, so feel free to answer. But what are your favorite places to eat in Slow? Anyone? I mean, we all already know Lindsay's apparently. <laughs> Catherine, you unmuted. I would say my favorite place to eat in Slow is Flower House. Um, it's an Italian restaurant downtown. They import most of their ingredients from Italy, so it's just super high quality. Um, out here I don't know if anyone's like gluten intolerant but they use this like double fine flour that is like grown in Italy only that doesn't cause the same like tummy problems not if you're celiac but if you just like gluten hurts you a little bit you could go to flower house and eat all the bread gluten you want um that's why I love it amazing place it is like low lights a little bit it's definitely a vibe in there quite a setting um but you get this al forno it's kind of their starter bread and it's the best bread I've ever had anyways highly recommend go there with your family it's it's a treat 
They also have the meter long pizza. Is it meter Monday? You and like six of your friends can go and split like this gigantic pizza. It's so good. So I, I definitely second that. Kathy. I have to say my favorite is High Street Deli, the best sandwiches ever. And then for a good poke bowl, poke rito downtown. My two were High Street and uh, Firestone. Um, Firestone, their tri-tip with their onion rings too are the best. Um, yeah, they're incredible. And right before I hopped on the train to come home uh, a couple days ago, I went to High Street. Um, so yeah, two best spots for sure. I stand by Firestone. My roommate disagrees. I stand by it. Also Night Creamery probably gonna go get it tonight I'm not gonna lie to you <laughs> we have so many sandwich places in slow it's kind of ridiculous it's something that minnesota is definitely lacking so maybe i'll start my own sandwich shop here i have uh, a ranking system for them yeah everyone has their own sandwich shop that they love same with breakfast burritos like everyone's like oh like breakfast buzz is mine some people like on campus like the av breakfast burritos are actually really good um my favorite place to eat is um actually nautical bean it's a coffee shop and so there's two of them and I mean just just a bagel with some pesto cream cheese that's, that's all it takes for me um okay so what are your favorite activities to do in slow everybody surfing at Pismo for sure just bought my own board at Costco my own wetsuit and everything and my roommates and I have been going to Pismo trying to twice a week to learn how I have to piggyback you there. Um, we go to Pismo sometimes in the mornings and there's like Old West cinnamon rolls, super famous cinnamon rolls right in Pismo down the street from like where you usually park to go out and surf. And so we'll go out in the early morning and then we'll walk down the street and get these like massive cinnamon rolls, uh, pretty good price, they're delicious. Or we go at sunset and you just like out on the water on your board with this amazing sunset. And totally like if surfing feels daunting to you, you can, as long as you can like just get past the waves on your surfboard, you can really just sit there and look at the water and like socialize. Like you do not have to be catching waves. Um, so it's really an option for you if you want to try. I would say I love a good sunset. Honestly, that's like a huge thing. Um, but something that I, I honestly really love to do is um, my friends and I will get like a whole bunch of picnic food and then we go to the drive-in and we watch a drive-in movie and it's so fun. And they're throwing like recents or they're throwing on throwbacks. Um, and it's a, it's a really fun time. This week they're showing The Nightmare Before Christmas. No, they're not. Yeah. Sorry, I just got really excited. <laughs> That's exciting. Last play, last movie Lindsay and I saw there was both of the first two Indiana Jones, right? Or maybe just the first one. Just the first one. Yeah. Super fun though. I love the drive-in. Also, it's like nice year round. So you can just like hop in the back of people's cars and it works really well. Um, I like just walking around slow. I love a good hike. John, John Muir Trail is like leads up to like forever into the Pacific Northwest, but it starts in SoCal. So you can just kind of go forever or is that that's the Purple Heart Trail. Sorry about it. But Lindsay was talking about my birthday and that was Salmon Creek Falls and just like hiking and being in nature is a really great place to so is a really great place to do that. Yeah, I definitely second the hiking and surfing. I also have only been once, but I went ATVing in um, the sand dunes. And definitely going to go again. It was really fun. Um, definitely recommend doing that. My parents actually visited me like two years ago in slow and they went ATVing without me. I was in class and they just did that instead of hanging out with me, which was a bummer. But definitely very jealous. It's on my to-do list too. All right. What's next? Uh, okay. I mean, this kind of goes along with it. What's one thing still on your slow bucket list? Mine is I bought a wetsuit and I still have yet to learn how to surf. So it's waiting for me and slow. I'm ready. I'm stoked for it. I have yet to do a tri-tip challenge. I've done two of the three hikes. I haven't done Madonna, done two, the other two, but definitely want to string them together and do them all on the same day. I haven't been to the Hearst Castle. Um, I feel like it's a classic. You kind of have to do if you're in the, on the Central Coast. So <laughs> I guess Grace thinks so. 
love it. We actually learned about Hearst Castle in one of my architecture history classes and it was so cool because we got to go like that weekend all together as a class. It was it was magical. One thing I have to do is stay a night at the Madonna Inn. I went there and ate cake with some friends last week. So that was insane. They give you like the biggest slices, bigger than your head. But I want to stay a night in one of like the super cool rooms that are themed. There's a place called Cuesta Ridge and you go up into the mountains and if you go at night when there's like um, not a whole lot of moonlight, you can see the stars like it's so clear. Um, and that, well, that's what I hear. That's the word that I've heard. So I am planning to go up there in the next few weeks um, and just like at like 1 a.m. and go look at the stars. I have to add one more. Oh, sorry, Grace, you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. I'm just about to head into the Q&A. Big, big bucket list item for me is going to Shebang. Um, one, a student from Cal Poly started a music festival that happens here on the Central Coast. Um, super popular for students, and they usually do it like twice a year. It's not happening right now because of COVID, but when it comes back, I will be finding myself there. I've never been able to go, so that's probably on mine too. All right, so we're going to transition over into the Q&A portion. Um, so feel free to put any of your questions in the Q&A and we'll be able to answer them live. Um, so how are flights to and from slow and is it easy to get to and from the airport? Um, so as an out of state student, I can definitely attest that we have a really great regional airport. Lindsay always makes fun of me because it's kind of one of my favorite places in slow. It's really nice. They have this like nice patio area outside. It's not a bad airport to be in and it's really small. Um, so it's like nice to be able to just like chill out. It's also really COVID safe, which I've, I've found to be really helpful, especially in these times. Um, but you can also take the train to and from LA and the Bay. So if you fly in and out of those airports, it's super easy. Um, and then during like big breaks, like spring break and winter break and Thanksgiving, the school actually sets up a, um, uh, like a transport bus system to and from the airport, which is super helpful. Um, obviously like Ubers can get really expensive. So if you time it right, you can, um, you can actually get there really, really quickly. Um, does anyone an want to answer? Um, slow appears to be the perfect fit for outgoing students who want to have fun, but will slow be a good fit for those students who are not very outgoing or outdoorsy? I would love to answer that. Um, I came into college, definitely consider myself uh, more of an introvert, definitely get more of my energy from inside. And I feel like Cal Poly has everything to offer. Of course, you have to seek it out if you sit in your dorm room, you know, and you're not actively looking for opportunities to find community with other students who enjoy quieter activities, you won't find it. But if you just look to the Cal Poly website for clubs, you know, or if you go to one event, you will find like-minded people. So I was able to join clubs based around like passions of mine. I joined like the Real Food Club where I really connected with people who are interested in like researching about nutrition. Um, I also like have been part of book clubs my whole college experience because I really love to read. Um, I'm part of book clubs where we read books together, but also ones where we just find companionship. We read side by side, but we're reading our own books. Um, I would say whatever it is, like, we have a huge like gaming community um, who loves and like tons of clubs, I think for like video gaming. So whatever you're looking for, I really think if you, you know, put out an interest and you look out for that community, it's absolutely there and you can get connected in with people. Also, there's like tons of older students on campus who love, love, love to mentor new students and they will help you connect into those communities. So don't be afraid to express that what seems like the typical Cal Poly student isn't what you're quite looking for out of your college experience and you want something else because honestly, I would say that's just as much the Cal Poly community. You just happen to get a group of people here who maybe love to go outdoors, so don't be scared away. Just a little thing to go off of that. Um, my roommates are all kinesiology majors. They like go and work out and run for fun. Like one of my roommates just ran like a half marathon because he could. Bold, but like he did it. And like I said, then we meet up for dinner afterwards and you know what, we all have a great time. So um, you can seriously find your people even in people that you wouldn't really expect to be friends with, um, you're good to go, I promise. Definitely. Um, so is college life continuing normal despite COVID? Sounds like everyone is going out to eat. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. So, I mean, we are a very food oriented campus just because there's so many good places to eat um, but we're actually very COVID conscious especially with the size of our university like having over 20,000 students um, and having some of those students live on campus. Um, we do have some of our classes in person and those are only lab based and you like have to have a COVID test before you even come on campus. Anyone living in the dorms is like continuously tested and the health center also has free COVID tests which is really great. Um, so everyone's pretty self conscious or like not self conscious but just like overall conscious um, within COVID and we're also pretty good at like self policing ourselves I'd say just being in slow over the summer. Um, like everyone wore masks even when like numbers were lower. So we're, we're pretty self like self cognizant of what's going on around us. Um, anyone else wanna add in for what slow looks like right now? Yeah, I would just add that I've been, um, it's really easy to get tested, which is the uh, medical staff and the health center has been amazing at um, making sure that students can get tested. Um, I've been tested twice. Thankfully, it came back negative both times. Um, but yeah, it's been very easy to, and they came back within the same day. So the testing's been um, really great. Um, how safe do you feel in slow, in parentheses, a mom is asking, which my mom would totally do something like that. I love that. <laughs> Anyone can answer. I can also answer too. Um, just in my personal experience, um, so it's very safe in my, only in my opinion. Um, I mean, we have so many different resources for students. Um, we have like the slow safe ride and we have a transport that goes from the dorms to the library and back and forth um, during like night. It goes until like, I think 1 a.m., which is super cool Dur during non-COVID times. Obviously our library isn't open right now, um, but we also have blue towers everywhere that like automatically call not only slow PD, but also the U UPD, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we, something that's newer that I learned about is that um, the university police, they actually have like um, a half a mile radius around campus. So even if you're just walking to and from home, which I live super close to campus, um, but like not knowing who to call when and if I would be in danger, um, that would be really scary for me. But it, no matter who you call in those situations, you, uh, the university police has like a much quicker response time. So even if you're like a half a mile from campus, you're able to get that response really quickly. Um, so I've never felt unsafe on campus. I mean, even being architecture and like walking back from studio at like 3 a.m., like I feel very safe. Um, yeah, to, oh yeah, go oh, really quick just to add to that. Um, I feel like the Cal Poly community feel has a lot to do with how safe I feel. Like I have had professors offer to take students home when we have like classes that go till 8 p.m. and it's already dark outside. Professors and classmates basically just checking in. Like if anybody needs a ride or is planning to walk home alone, there are people available for you. Similar experiences for me with like roommates, people in the dorms, a lot of willingness to show up, you know, for fellow Mustangs. And so that has helped me feel like I'm never really alone. Um, and you do have the pos like the option to go for earlier in the day classes. So if you're worried about being on campus late, once it's darker, I um, mean, you don't want to be walking home at night. That's something you can um, try to register your classes earlier in the day when it's light outside. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyone can answer this too, or multiple people. Is there something that you don't like about slow or like what's something that you could change about slow? I would say it's not as much that I don't necessarily like, but um, I grew up in Oklahoma and um, the only thing that state like really has is football. So, and I know it sounds kind of weird, but um, honestly, I grew up thinking like D1 school with huge football, huge sports was make or break college experience. Um, and Cal Poly, if you're looking to, to go to a school where you tailgate, where you have, you know, huge football all day um, for an entire weekend, that's some not necessarily um, Cal Poly's like vibe, but um, what I found is that our sports are, our D1 athletes are not like, like they live in the residence halls with us. You become friends with people who are on the D1 teams, which is so cool. Two of my really good friends freshman year are on the D1 football team. Um, but I found that soccer is huge here. Actually, in turn, we don't have football as big, but we actually have the largest um, collegiate soccer rivalry in the nation. 
I didn't really know much about soccer when I lived in Oklahoma. So this was uh, crazy to learn. Um, and it's like, it's us versus UCSB and it is huge. The, like that is our like tailgate. I like stand by this statement that there is glitter covering the city because everyone is just decked out in green and gold. And like everyone, like your professors, community members, students. And like, that is really where like you can get your sports fix, I would say. But that is one thing that I think I miss a little bit is not having that massive football or like big sports. We um okay next up I know so this is about Greek life so we have I was in Greek life Lindsay was in Greek life Catherine I'm pretty sure you were also in Greek life I don't know about Nick or Madison if either of you were um but what is Greek life like at Cal Poly and is it a really big part of social life I, Lindsay I know you have like this spiel down pat so if you want to present on this that's totally great but anyone else can add in too yeah I'm happy to the way I like to say it is um about one in five students, 20% of our student population is a part of Greek life. If you want it, great, we have it. If you don't want it, great, there are 5,000 other things for you to do. Um, on average, Cal Poly students are involved in three to four clubs. Um, so if you are a part of Greek life, like, great. Um, but that's probably just going to be a side thing that you're also doing. Um, like it can be your life totally. Um, the community is a great thing to be part of. Like I've loved my time. Um, but I also have found like a community in poly reps, which is like our, like we mentioned at the beginning, like our tour guide organization. Um, and there's also more than just like your typical fraternity sorority. We have cultural fraternities, community service, um, academic base. Like I know our um, Delta SIG, which is our like business fraternity is like the coolest thing I've ever heard of. And they have just like the best time. So um, if you want it, great, but we are not a university that's like Greek life or bust. If Greek life's not your thing, do not worry. <laughs> um, you're gonna find your home in 5,000 other things. That's what I would say, but it, it sounds like everyone else here also has experience. So like, I'd love for someone else to chime in. I just agree with Lindsay. That's been my experience that um, coming into college, I really loved going through the process of recruitment because it was a great way to meet a bunch of new people, whether I ended up joining um, a sorority or not. It was just a fun way to build community and feel surrounded during those first weeks. But I would absolutely say there is a Greek population, but there's a huge non-Greek population and it doesn't feel like it takes over. You can totally have a social life and feel a sense of community without being in the Greek system. And I think Lindsay said this, but Greek life is what, 25% of students 20 percent of students are in it so that is that's not a lot at all it's there it's enough if you want it and you want the full-blown experience but you don't have to be part of it to feel like you have a community yeah my experience has been um exactly the same as Lindsay and Catherine just mentioned um i think i would just say i am in part, a part of greek, greek life but i've also branched out and tried a lot of other things that um cap always had to offer so like they said, I think it's just great to try a bunch of different things and meet a lot of different communities. And the more you do that, the better experience you'll have. Definitely. And then really quick, Gianna has a great question for us. What housing groups did you all choose for your first year? Which I think is so fun. I was in an academically centered environment um, and TRIO, which is first generation students. I was mindful living, so I stayed in the new dorms last year. I was in business administration with um, in Yosemite. I was with the College of Science and Math as a business major in Yosemite, <laughs> which is great. That's how I met my kinesiology friends. I was, I think it's called Slow Discovery or something like that um, in North Mountain. Yeah, so we lived all over. I lived in the Red Bricks, Mirror for Life. Woo! It's like, literally the P, like the hike to the P is where I lived, which was super cool. Um, okay, I think we're going to wrap up, but we have some great links in the chat for you that um, you should definitely check out. Just copy and paste those over. I wish that I had a ton of those resources. Lindsay, do you have a question? Yeah, 
oh, I, someone just asked about um, study abroad and I told them we'd answer it. So oh, I've talked a lot, so Madison, Nick, or Catherine, if you guys want to talk about study abroad, if you have, but if not, I can do it too. I'll talk briefly, just a little intro to study abroad. Tons and tons of students study abroad. I think one in four probably students end up having an abroad experience. There's a ton of different options. So you can go abroad for two weeks, you can go abroad for a quarter, you can go abroad for an entire year. Um, and it can be like an academically focused abroad program. So architects will go the entire year and they will have their classes based around architecture when they're there, but you can also go for to Italy and have just take general classes that cover GEs and have um, an experience that isn't specifically academics related. We have programs in what over 90 countries everywhere, anywhere you could want to go, they're there. Um, you can go with like a Cal Poly trip with a professor, you could go with an outside organization that takes students abroad an incredible amount of options. I'm sure that's overwhelming, but we also have study abroad fairs. Um, and that means a ton of booths will pop up on one of the lawns on campus and you can go and you can ask questions so it can, you know, you can become more familiar with the options and decide what you wanna do. Sadly, I was supposed to be abroad this quarter. So um, I'm not there because of COVID. I don't have any personal experiences to share, but if anybody wants to talk about their personal experience abroad, go ahead. I was there this past, I was supposed to be there this past semester, then it got cut short to a quarter, but Prague was still incredible. Um, I got to go to like a ton of different countries. I studied in Prague, which is in the Czech Republic. Um, seriously, like, it's weird to think that I like lived in a different country for like two months, and I do get that like, oh, did you study abroad? Joke a lot. So, like, it's fine. You can mock me as much as you want. Um, but I got to travel around everywhere from, like, um, Belgium to England to Austria. Like, I went, I don't know how to ski, but I went to the Austrian Alps, and you know what? It's so cool. And um, Cal Poly does a really great job of supporting its students and, like, financial aid. Um, also, if you want to travel just within the United States, like, my friend actually went on to college, like, switch program where he went and studied up at Oregon for a quarter. Um, you can go to Hawaii and just, you know, surf for class credit. So, you know, like we have so many different options, but definitely, definitely study abroad. It, the cliche is like, it's going to change your life. Yeah. Well, it changes your life. So it's pretty great. Um, that's, that's about it on that. And Aaron, are we so, ready to wrap up? I think we are. So thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank each of our panelists. Um, I think this is such an exciting opportunity to learn more about San Luis Obispo and hopefully someday soon that uh, you all will be able to come and visit San Luis Obispo. Uh, we thank you each of you for spending time here today with us. Um, encourage to, I encourage you all to sign up for the Cal Poly webinar series. We also have a virtual tour that is happening in 59 minutes. So if you want to come and learn more about Cal Poly, uh, check out our visit website. We got a tour happening in 59 minutes. Uh, we also have so many different opportunities. If you are a current student looking to apply, check out our application, um, our application Q and A's. You're welcome to check that out as well. Um, and we have so many more exciting opportunities and different things coming your way. You can also use Calendly and schedule an appointment with a current student. Reach out to our office or experience any other Cal Poly experiences. So with that, thank you so much and we wish you all the best. Thanks so much.